Lead version 4.1 for residential is here. The latest version of the rating system is available for project teams to start using today. Let's explore the highlights of Lead v4.1 residential multifamily and multifamily core and shell. The rating system consists of mandatory prerequisites and optional credits across these categories. Let's start with integrative process. LEAD encourages projects to engage team members early in the design process. This allows teams to discover beneficial interrelationships and synergies between systems and components. This is a highly collaborative approach that acknowledges that each project is unique. There are two ways to earn the integrative process credit. The first way is to conduct an early analysis of the project with all stakeholders. This helps to achieve effective design solutions and optimize cost. If the integrated design strategies are not communicated to the job site, many of their best practices may be lost. The second way to earn the integrative process credit rewards projects for training the installation contractors on the unique green features of the building to better ensure that these features are installed properly. The next category is location and transportation. This category rewards thoughtful decisions about building location. We have credits that consider the existing features of the surrounding community and how this infrastructure affects occupants' interaction within their community. Well-located buildings take advantage of existing infrastructure, public transit, street networks, pedestrian paths, bicycle networks, services and amenities, and existing utilities such as electricity, water, gas, and sewage. If integrated into the surrounding community, a building can offer distinct advantages to owners and building users. For owners, proximity to existing utility lines and street networks avoids the cost of bringing this infrastructure to the project site. For occupants, walkable and bikeable locations can enhance health by encouraging daily physical activity and proximity to services and amenities can increase happiness and productivity. Here is the full list of credits available. We'll review a few of the highlights. LEED supports an incremental approach and sets progressive goals for a project. For example, the electric vehicles credit rewards projects for installing an electric vehicle charging station or for setting up infrastructure that allows for future installation of an electric vehicle charging station. Finally, LEED includes multiple transportation demand management options like car share and unbundling parking in the reduced parking footprint credit to enable sustainable transportation choices. The sustainable sites credit category in LEED v4.1 focuses on the environment surrounding the building. In other words, the vital relationships among buildings, ecosystems, and ecosystem services. We want projects to be responsive to the site surroundings, restore site elements, and preserve biodiversity and ecosystem services. Here is the full list of prerequisites and credits available. Again, we'll review a few of the highlights. This credit category incorporates various strategies that make it more relevant and accessible to residential projects across the globe. For example, there are prescriptive options in the Construction Activity Pollution Prevention Prerequisite that make it attainable for projects worldwide. Another example is updated standards for financial contribution to land conservation that increases the achievability of this requirement. If a residential project is not able to create open space within the project boundary, the project may take credit for nearby publicly accessible open spaces. For core and shell projects, it is very important to teach the end users or residents about the project's green features. The Tenant Design and Construction Guidelines credit specifically addresses this critical issue, where the project team is required to document green features that need to be conveyed to the tenants or homeowners for continued performance. The Water Efficiency Credit category addresses water holistically. It covers indoor use, outdoor use, specialized uses, and water metering. LEED encourages an efficiency-first approach to water conservation. That means, first, let's try to use less water, then look for alternate sources of the water. Saving water is a critical need, and water saving and reuse strategies help us in saving this valuable resource. Here is the full list of prerequisites and credits available. Again, we'll review a few of the highlights. 
The total water use, prerequisite, and credit gives projects immense flexibility to determine their most effective strategies for saving potable water. New compliance pathways have been developed to reward projects for their specific water efficiency improvements in indoor and or outdoor water reduction. To obtain the highest efficiency and promote sustainability at the individual level, LEAD rewards the installation of a permanent water meter that measures total water use in each residential dwelling unit, as well as meters that measure the different water subsystems. The Energy and Atmosphere Credit category approaches energy management from a holistic perspective, addressing energy use reduction, energy efficient design strategies, renewable energy sources, refrigerant management, and peak load management. Electricity costs are rising over time, and increased electricity leads to higher greenhouse gas emissions. Saving energy, or electricity, not only has a direct impact on household expenditures, but also helps meet critical environmental goals. Energy-efficient homes have the potential to save more than 50% of their energy compared to conventional homes. Here is the full list of prerequisites and credits available. We'll again review a few of the highlights. Reducing carbon emissions is a primary goal of LEED. In order to maximize efficiency, we updated our reference standard for energy performance to ASHRAE 90.1-2016 and added two metrics to demonstrate performance, cost and greenhouse gas emissions. For residential buildings, the Optimized Energy Performance Credit includes a new prescriptive option as well as dwelling unit energy simulation. Commissioning and fundamental systems testing and verification requirements are applicable to all multifamily project types, including small projects with no central systems and mixed-use buildings with sophisticated central HVAC systems. The Renewable Energy Credit includes the concepts of both renewable energy production and green power and carbon offsets, and addresses diverse methods of renewables procurement and the evolving global renewables markets. Finally, the Grid Harmonization Credit recognizes the role of buildings in supporting grid-scale decarbonization. The new credit option rewards technologies and strategies for building load flexibility and management. The Materials and Resources Credit category supports a life-cycle approach to the materials that are used within the building. This starts with managing construction and demolition waste and continues on to fostering material reuse and recirculation to minimize the embodied energy and other impacts associated with the extraction, processing, transport, maintenance, and disposal of building materials. Here is the full list of prerequisites and credits available. Again, we'll review a few of the highlights. LEED encourages the design and construction of low embodied carbon structures and the selection of materials with low environmental and human health impacts. LEED V4.1 Residential provides two paths for projects to demonstrate this achievement. This allowed us to keep approaches from the HOMES rating system as well as those aligned with the LEED V4.1 rating system for building design and construction. In order to hasten the shift in the residential building sector towards this direction, thresholds in several credits have been updated. Additional credit options have been introduced in some credits like the Environmentally Preferable Products Credit. These changes ensure that project teams have multiple pathways available to pursue in order to demonstrate credit compliance, making this credit category more accessible for the residential market. The Indoor Environmental Quality category rewards decisions that improve air quality and thermal, visual, and acoustic comfort. Green buildings with good indoor environmental quality protect the health and comfort of building occupants. Here is the full list of prerequisites and credits available. Once again, we'll review a few of the highlights. Enhancing human health is a primary goal that LEED aims to achieve. This category consists of prerequisites like combustion venting and radon-resistant construction to address critical life safety hazards, as well as credits that improve the quality of the space, such as thermal and acoustical comfort. LEED incorporates different standards for mechanical and natural ventilation, so that buildings with any ventilation types must demonstrate a minimum standard of indoor air quality. 
The indoor air quality assessment credit ensures that occupants are protected from exposure to pollutants generated from construction activities. The Enhanced Indoor Air Quality Strategies Credit rewards strategies and technologies that ensure healthy indoor air during the lifetime of the project. Finally, this credit category focuses on aspects like daylighting, noise control, and thermal comfort, and has requirements that focus on providing better indoor air quality for residential buildings. Collectively, these strategies make up LEED v4.1 residential, multifamily, and multifamily core and shell. This will be our most inclusive and transparent platform to date. That's because our most important requirement for adoption will come from our most valuable resource of all, you. Register your project under LEED v4.1 residential through LEED Online to get started today.